Have you bought a new camera with all your savings? I don't blame you if you did, I have done the same. But there are hidden costs of doing photography. At first, they might not seem important, but they will creep up over time and hold you back from enjoying this wonderful hobby. By ignoring these costs, you risk spending even more later on, and you may even lose your favorite photographs forever. It's better to budget for all expenses up front so you can focus on improving your skills and creating art. So today I will tell you what these costs are and how much you can expect to spend. I also put links below for budget, mid-range and luxury variants I would buy today. Computer Everyone has some computer and any computer can handle basic photo editing. The problem is that modern cameras have an ever-increasing resolution and more megapixels means larger image files. And then a fast computer comes very handy, especially when you need to process hundreds of photos at once. Indexing and thumbnail creation can take a long time. Less powerful hardware can take ages to import photos from your SD card and make the computer unusable for anything else in the process. You can cut this cost by shooting straight to JPEGs, but a good computer is a must for anyone who wants to edit raw files and not get gray hair in the process. You have heard that Apple makes good computers for photographers, but did you know that you can buy a pre-built Windows PC that costs the same but is a lot more powerful? Monitor. Modern cameras produce high quality photos with higher resolution. There is nothing better than to see them on a large, high resolution screen. You may think that a laptop is enough, but unless you have a luxury range laptop with a large quality screen, you will want to buy an external monitor. One way around this is to get an all-in-one computer with a quality screen, but these are few and far between. The controls in editing software take a lot of screen real estate, so a 27-inch 4K monitor is the minimum you should go for. The good news is that there is a lot to choose from in every price range. The bad news is that like with everything else in life, you will get what you pay for. Software you will need some editing software, regardless if you shoot in JPEG or RAW. These apps are also great at organizing your photographs, creating albums and catalogs. Every app will come with the same basic exposure editing features, so it's about what you want on top of that. Adobe Lightroom and Capture One are the best. Majority photographers use them for the editing and organizing capabilities, but there are other apps too. Some are available for free, but none are at the level of these two when it comes to the full stack of features. Adobe Lightroom is the most popular and you can get it for $10 per month or with Photoshop for twice that. Capture One costs are similar, but you can buy it once and keep the license forever if you don't like subscriptions. But be careful, if you buy a new camera, it's likely that your old version of editing software won't recognize the raw files. With a subscription service, you always get the latest version that can read everything. Storage Despite what you may think, sooner than later you will run out of storage. At first you will use the hard drive space available in your computer, but those never have a large enough capacity, especially if you are using a laptop. So you will end up buying an external storage. Simple external hard drive of decent capacity can be had for about $200, there are cheaper options, but you will want something that has fast connection, Thunderbolt or USB 3.0 at the very least. Otherwise, you won't be able to work on the files directly from the external hard drive. You can invest in a network attached storage or NAS. Uh, here we are talking about hundreds or rather thousands of dollars and a whole different level of challenges and learning curve. I won't go into detail of this now. There are more qualified people who will tell you what to do but I did make a video about the NAS I use, so check it out below. Backup 3 is 2, 2 is 1 and 1 is none. If you have a main external hard drive with all your photos, then you are asking for trouble. There is no way around it. You have to start backing up your data from day 1. And I know you will ignore me and store all your photos on one hard drive in one location and maybe nothing will happen for a long time. But when it does, and you lose some or all your precious memories, it will be a lesson you will remember forever. You need to keep at least another identical copy as a backup. The best is to have one more stored in a different location. 
This can be an online backup service too, but this costs money in your subscriptions and you don't own the physical storage. And what's in the cloud can be blown away. There are many ways to do backups and lower the chance of losing data to almost zero, so do the research and find one strategy that fits your circumstances the best. It's okay to start small and simple, something is better than nothing. Your needs will change over time and so will the way you back up your files. Also, keep in mind that NAS is not a backup, regardless of what RAID combination you choose to use. Learning. This is a big one that very few take into account. Everyone is saving for a new camera, but only a few budget for a quality workshop. There are a lot of photographers offering paid workshops and there's nothing wrong with paying for a good lesson. It's necessary to learn from a good teacher if you want to make leaps forward in taking photos or editing them. You will learn on your own, but it's a lot faster and more fun to do this in a group of focused, motivated individuals. And you will make friends in the process too. Check YouTube, Instagram or other social media. Look for a photographer whose style you like. Go to their workshop if you can afford it. Education is the only investment that doesn't have diminishing returns. Sadly, cameras are the direct opposite. So if you want to lose as little money as possible, buy them used. Here are my favorites for this year.